Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to XWZ map number three. We're going to go through the records. Uh, and let's start off straight away by having a look at what was going on after map number two. We had Goblin taking the lead over Delta, over Dizzy, over Source, over Knight. Down, hitting in the top 20, Soup. Now, Soup, Rogue and Dizzy have not completed map number three. So they are out of the top 20 and probably not getting back into it. But let's see where the rest of this top 20 and the people below it will be ending up. So, yeah. Into the game. We shall uh, take a quick look at the map. 24, 3. So. Here we are. A map mostly made by VP and then edited by uh, Cool to make the route that we see today. You come out the start here, you can do a double jump up here and go around there, or you can take this option here. You fly through here, you can go to the left over here, or sorry, to the right, or you can go to the left, come down here, get some speed off of one of these two, round this side, or you can take the ramp up, and again, choose left down here, or right down here, through this way, and then a bit of a turn over this up this ramp we'll be expecting to see most people coming up this ramp the last things have been optional around this 180 degree corner and then some of the vague ways around through here down here and into the finish so uh, yeah let's flick over and find the secrets which we're going to do in this mode in the flying mode there's one around here somewhere I'm sure there is There's a secret. So if you popped through this wall here, through here, I did a very tricky parkour course that I could only get round here to here and to this one, and I couldn't make it to this one because I suck. You then jump off of here, badunk, up here, and you have access to all of the weapons and to Kool-Aid. Or I can't remember where the other one is. It's probably above, isn't it? I can see it. There it is. Or you can come out here and get to the very potent one. So there are your secrets for the map. Uh, and I'm just going to have a quick check over because VP sent me some pretty interesting stuff about the making of this map. Cool obviously did the remake in six hours, basically, flat six hours, but there was an original map, and one of the problems with it was the fact that Freddy didn't have an idea that XDF didn't have skims when he came up with the original version of the map. But the original version was cut from a single brush, with wall brushes added and brushes, the extra brushes deleted. If you want to play it, the original version is XDWC-3 original on World Spawn. It's uh, going to be better played in Quake 3. Cool redid it to this using the same. It does from the top look like a cutout layout. In fact, this end bit here, that is uh, pretty much the same. And you're just kind of cutting across through the center of the old map and then finishing with the finish just there. So yeah, Cool chopped it all up, added the leftward spiral to the start and we have the map that we have now which you may or may not have enjoyed more or less than the original one but who will know this is the map we've got this is the map we played uh, and this is what we are going to be looking at so let's take a look first at our final player while we go through some of the stats which round overview is it? That one, I can close the other one there. So, we have got 235 players finishing the map. 
which is the third most players ever. It's the most players for a round three that we've ever had. This is the highest rel time of the top 50. So we have had an incredibly close top 50 with 0.953, uh, 959 as the, uh, as the top rel relative time. So everyone super, super, super tightly packed. 90, basically 96% of the world record um, 142 players have finished every map uh, so far so taking a look at a couple of things we've got cool who I asked about the route and what he thought was gonna happen he says we should see everybody doing the same route but with very small variations so we're gonna need to see how people are exactly taking the double jumps how they're exactly landing the ramps where are they looking how tight are they going are they going far are they going inside i know from some of my uh routing that it really mattered where like left or right of one of these blocks where you double jumped off of it um, and apparently some players have been very clever because they can't match the raw strafe efficiency and speed of source or goblin so we will see how everything goes through with this map because it's been a really interesting one um, this is of course just the final route final run out of all those 235 players but, you know, this is what most people are getting. The fact that 142 players finished all three maps, I reckon you could officially say the number of people who play every map is at least the number of proper, like, you know, your, your proper player base. I know there's going to be some people who don't finish every map that are genuine players. Of course, Dizzy unable to make it to this round and that sort of thing. But, you know, you can say for sure if they finish all five rounds that they are definitely a player of the game. And we've got a solid top 100 here. I mean, we're about to get into the first run, which we'll take a look at now. We do have an African player uh, this week with a 41.72. We have Broccoli. Uh, so, yeah, we've got three African players this week, which is way better than last week where we had zero. But the... Uh, I forgot to... Professional streamer, I'm telling you. Um, so, yeah, we've got three African players this week, which is great. But also, this run is one second, uh, ten seconds away from the top 50, which is 100%, uh, sorry, 100 places lower. This came in at 146 I should not try to read and read three things at once this is 146th place for the top Africa player but yeah 100 places is 10 seconds which is really not a lot and that shows you where the rel time comes from because I mean this isn't half a bad run to be fair I mean that gets through it that gets you through it next up we have Paul for the first time in a very long... Actually, no, it happened last week as well. No mind. Uh, Australia champion outside of the top. Um, yeah, outside the top. 20. Did happen last week, but only just. Fight for South America? Who's fighting you? So this was 29th place overall. 31.36 very 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 solid time Paul had a very early 31.4 and I think this was even set pretty late in the week as well but yeah a very early 31.4 which was a solid time that held pretty much to the end in the top 30 but he did manage to improve it, keep himself in the top 30. Which is, that's an interesting route. I didn't see anyone doing that. Paul says every week that he's got Goblin's uh, route, though. So potentially we'll see that that's a super fast route. Who knows? Pretty clean time. Pretty clean time. There's going to be a lot of just clean time. We're going to have to really analyse some of the later runs um, to figure out exactly where they go. Because one place above... We have Dez, South American champion. 
with a 31.33. Does that be sweating this week? But, you know, he's got a good run. He's got a good run. I now give him 30 seconds to talk about an evil Angelica's the purple step. Take it away, Des. I will. I will repeat all of what you say. Now I am taking. I'm going to say this uh, as Des will say it in chat. I'm not. I'm not going to take any side with the purple step. But Des will say this step here that we've just gone across. I mean, Des doesn't even touch it. You know, he says says that it's the almighty purple step, the giver and taker of PBs, but he doesn't even touch the purple step. So, you know. But that was definitely a thing, hitting into that purple step. For me, it was purple step or the orange one at the bottom. 0.01 ahead of Dez. Your Asia champion from Turkey. Would you, uh, so yeah, we've got 29, 28, and 27 with the Continental Champions. Absolutely packing it in there. Because uh, we're still missing the uh, US and Europe Champions. But we'll get to them in the top 20. So here it is. A different side, a left side. I saw a lot of people taking the left side, but not taking full advantage of the down ramp. Getting quite good speed here. Nice up ramp. I only lost about 20 speed there. Round this uh, left hand side. I am going to mess up left and right constantly. I do not know my left and my right. Ooh, oh, that's a beautiful AD turn. That's an absolutely stunning AD turn. Look at that. Brilliant run right there. That's a blank slide. And that's Rainbow Shadow. Let's take it into the top 20 where we have 30.8. Eight, nine, we are into the top, uh, we are into sub 30 territory, or well, not sub 30, but sub, uh, sub 31, 30.xx. 30 and I will say right now, the top 20 is split by 1.02 seconds. So there's the, there's the winner's time. Most people know the winner, of course, already by the time they're watching this, we're just here to watch how it happened rather than uh, what happened but here we go there's an insight into a route we should be probably expecting a double jump there instead of bouncing on top of it and here we go going off over to the left at the start taking double jump off that purple and this is the route that I was taking which is quite nice very oh that was that 10 that might have been 10 speed lost there absolutely stunning crouching through there to not head hit cracking run straight through the corner really nice keeping it tight good strafes at the end really difficult to get the strafes coming through in the end there because of how tight the turns are but that's uh, that's brilliant yeah next up Riona. A small improvement over Rainbow Shadow's time. Coming in with a 30.87 in 19th place. Remember to drink. Speaking of speed mapping, <laughs> now we'll sort that later. Bring your own round six is coming. Here we go. Quite a difficult uh, circle jump, actually. You might as well take a moment to talk about that. You've got to get the speed, but you've also got to aim it. Because your spacing matters as you come through there. Okay, nicely done. Gets the jump off of there. Double jump there as well. Coming around this corner, really nice route. Quite a bit more speed loss, takes the AD round there instead of the W turn, and then coming to the right of that junction. And then flinging it through straight up the stairs. Really, t oh, that's really tight. Goes wide on the exit, and then just flinging it in towards the finish. I mean, it's really difficult to tell what the 
difference between those two runs are. It's going to be super difficult to figure out what's going on uh, between the two between two players. I think we might have to do that thing, uh, pop back to something like one of these runs we're seeing now, Rainbow or uh, Riona or someone around here. Pop back to them when we're at the top just to see the true difference. We're going to have to remember what what routes each of these people took so that we go back to one that's a um, that's a, uh, the same route as the record. So One. here we go with Mui with a 30.97. Yeah, so that end going wide at the end, much slower from what we've seen throughout the week. So that is a really solid run that just couldn't quite pull off the end. But honestly, it was such a grind to get everything to come together. You get everything, you get a little bit better, you get a little bit better, and then suddenly everything comes together and you can knock point two off. Oh, apparently Mui's run is a world record beating run with a terrible end. So, I, uh, okay. So Riona's end was the slower end. Going round is objectively slower. But here we see... Oh, that's beautiful. So Knight told me... I really should have read what Knight had said. Um, Knight told me that we should look out for that. Really nice turn. Nice AD. That's interesting. That is something I really didn't see. But apparently a couple of people using it. That's wide. That is really wide at the end. And the super wide ending. I can see why it might be not the greatest end in the world. But yeah... That is quite something over on the end there. Let's take a look. So the jump patterns versus the left and the right side at the start. Left side's shorter, but the shorter path requires keeping a lot of Excel because otherwise you're not going to have enough speed and you're going to bonk on the yellow platform. Other than that, it's mainly grinding to get as good Excel and keep as tight as possible at the end 180 and then accelerate as much as you can towards the end. That is from... Uh, what Knight believes and yeah it that pretty much tracks with everything we've seen and especially with what Mui has just pulled out there absolutely legendary run here from Uchi One. Uh, yeah I know that this is a much different route to what everybody else has taken as well so this will be interesting because this is a particularly different route that, um, according to Cool, is at least 0.25 slower going this way with the double jump. So you can see that 0.22, that'll be from a regular start. But this is where it gains the sort of the time back by being super quick across here, but being about 50 units a second faster by the time you get to there. You have the entire map to gain all of that time back, going about 100 units a second faster through here than you would otherwise be and then flinging it through to the end it's whether it keeps that time up so absolutely a different route just something very very interesting yeah but from some other people you, you find ways to do the end faster and I think Uchi found a particularly good way to do the end there next up we have 96 Snow, who I believe, uh, I will check. We did have, we have both Snows in the top 20 this week. So this is 96 plus Snow, eat veggies on the server, rather than Snow, Flat Snow, who is still the proper Snow, because uh, Snow's above. <laughs> we'll get to that other run, but here we go. 30.7. On the slow snow. Yeah, the, the, both of these runs are insane. Backwards way. Okay, starting with the double jump, same as Uchi. I will probably refer to that as the Uchi route because uh, Uchi did send it to me and I did try it for a while. Coming through, more space. Beautiful turn there. Oh, that's a really nice AD turn. We saw a few people W turning it and a few people AD turning it. So far, mostly ADs. Oh, that was an interesting way to take that. Bouncing off the top. 
going super wide at the end. We'll see if anyone does go wide. It could be faster with... Um, could be faster to go around the end if you're going at that much speed that you just simply can't make it round on the inside. So it could be interesting to see how people end up pulling it round with that one. Next up though we have Jay Chite, the absolute legend, the mapper of round four. Yeah, he got a good time. He's back. After only having a few hours to grind the last map, map two, JH is back. We are 30.68. Nobody getting a 0 0.69. Disappointed in you all. We skipped it. There's a 0 0.7 and a 0 0.68. But JH run should be pretty good. In theory. So we'll see how it goes. It's going to be pretty close to the end of the uh, end of the map that we're going to be getting to here. And let's head off. 525 start speed. Cooking pretty quickly around the corner. Going to be going to the inside route. Jade was doing the other, the left side route for a while, so did manage to change that up at the end. Getting good speed around that corner. Sending it over the top on the yellow. Uh, I believe that's the one Knight said that you might bonk into, or it'd be this yellow block. Jace letting go of the strafe keys and just turning, just AD turning around the stairs, making sure he doesn't bonk into the purple step to get the spacing. And there we are. There's so much going on inside of these. I'm going to basically run through the top three. I'll probably run through and then run them back through in full 50% speed. Because it's just so much. Every single bounce is precise. It's just insane. And next up we have Gibbs. Coming at you in 14th place with a 30.64. Ooh, that's tight. That's tight. 5.30 speed. With the, uh, the Uchi route around here. Nicely done. Ooh, great up ramp. Really small amount of speed. Loss of DJ cancel there, probably to reset the spacing so you don't bonk into the corner on the next part. Then ADing just here to get the spacing again. Super tight through there. A little bit wide on the exit, but good uh, good angle to the finish. Able to get some good strafe into the finish by the looks of things. That's probably where the time was gained, really, or uh, kept ahead by getting some good strafe into the finish over that PB. And just a little bit time better. Moving on to a 0.61 with the real Whoa. snow. Would the real snow please stand up or sit down or stay? Whatever you want to do. Bonk. Interesting route if that is the route. I'm not sure where he's going to go there. But potentially that's just a, uh, oh, I messed up. I'm just going to hold W and D and see what happens. Okay, going back to the left hand side here. So this is what Knight said with uh, the left hand side probably harder to keep the speed. Nice double jump up through there. That's a really interesting route. I did not see that one at all myself. Nice double jump. That'll be the adjustment. Nice little bit of adjustment. Um, and then straight through the finish. Next up we have Azju. Clawing his way back up after a bit of a weak round three, uh, round two, sorry, where he didn't have uh, didn't have too much of a great time on that map. So clawing his way back up. And here we go. There is no denial of the purple step. It is a step that you just have to get over. 539 start speed. That's a ridiculous start speed. Asju has a great circle jump. That's a really nice spacing bit of a wiggle there. 
the good good flicks between the two keeping to the same intermediate bit of a time loss there that's probably from the wiggle losing a bit of speed nicely over the top coming round here gets a double jump off of the purple step so any faster and that would have killed the run straight across the line and straight back into another run just absolutely through with it and so we'll do the same and we'll just jump straight on to tilted Manoa with a point four seven. Grinding quite heavily on this map. One of the most played uh, players of the week. So that's a thing. So we've all. Uh, so the interesting thing about this run is it has the fastest CP3 and the fastest CP5. Now there could be some stuff with um, with routes changing, but the slow one was CP4. So I'm going to say that is something to do with routes changing. That CP2 wasn't too fast and CP4 was very slow, comparatively. So yeah, this will be why CP2 wasn't fast. Not taking the step, but getting an absolutely monstrous amount of speed coming through here. Not quite as much coming through there because of the odd route. And then this one, that's insane on the turn. And a fast finish to boot. One of the fastest finishing uh, speeds that we see on this route. Just 03 away from the fastest. So yeah, really fast finish. Very interesting route though. One of the only people I, think, I don't think we're going to see very much other than the ramp. So that's an in, it's an interesting one that you can still get runs. And that was what a lot of people were saying, that the runs were very difficult to get, but you could um, you could do it with any route, basically. You just had to push that route hard enough. No, it's not stupidity. It's definitely not stupidity. Like, you just had to push the route hard enough, and you did push the route hard enough. You know, that's that's how it goes. You're going to get the... But on that map, it really was... On the last day, there's no point changing your route because you're not going to get that much gain. Next up... I don't even know who this guy is, to be honest. Some... Some guy... Doesn't seem to have a proper name. Really. Yeah. Came top 10 somehow, though. And didn't respond to my DMs. Bastard. Must be a wrong name, I know, I know. I have three names. So this one is Vert, but he's been fake nicking all week, he hasn't been on as Vert, and I genuinely have three names in the information that I've got, and that's not including that one which I did myself <laughs> when, I, when I made the data for this, that blank name. It's not including that one in the three names that I've got. But here we go. Busted by his slapping. Taking the left-hand route, getting a really nice drop down. Great spacing, loses a fair bit of speed, but he keeps it tight off the back of that. Nicely through the centre bit there. So a lot of people were talking, do you take left or right after the ramp? And the option is uh, you take right and then cut the left. Absolutely incredible. What time was that? Why is that not his fastest time? We might be missing a demo. That should probably be the route that he took because I know he took the same run. That potentially there might be a bit of a problem with the demo running there. Uh, the cuts pick automatically because it just it uses that um, line that you sent me to only take the last script i'm gonna quickly drop des my script it worked last week everything was right and multiple things do come out hold on a second uh demos no
Ignore this part. Thank you very much to everybody who has um, played this week. It's been an amazing week. We are into the top 10 now, so we'll do this. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'll rerun by hand. Uh, um, what's the one called? Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. That's why. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone who played. Thank you to everybody who hops on the servers. Helping new people. It is amazing seeing a lot of people getting helped. And it's been great, yeah. Hold on, it doesn't pick the first one on the demo, I don't believe. Because... Uses that. Right, let's rerun it. Uh, it doesn't find any records. <laughs> Oh, right, yes. It's alright. I missed it. Okay, it's not... So the uh, extractor's not finding the fastest record. Apologies to Vert for that one. Uh, I blame you fake nicking. On the fact that it's not found the record. It's just... Yeah, it's just not finding the fastest record when it's ran. It does. So we will uh, look into that one for next week. Apologies to Vert for that one. If we find it, we'll run it next week or something. If it's not in the... Someone check the uh, video Morrow uploads to see if that one worked. Anyway, back to the next records. Frosty with a 4-5... Incredibly tight Boy. records again. Yes, yeah, so thank you to everyone who's played. Apologies for that uh, dubious bit. We're going from a 4.6 to a 4.5. We are technically gaining like a little bit. It still is a... Oh no, Vert would be behind Tilted because Tilted was 0.01. Resident Sleeper. I can't believe it. Here we go. Good start. Clean around the edges. Drops down here, going to the left. Ooh, and a deep landing. So this didn't get this. That's a chunk of speed lost. That's impressive from Frosty, losing a lot of speed there, going the long way around this side. So this is just some hard strafe. I mean, coming in here with 2,000 units, that's absolutely mad for the short route around there. Bonkers. He ate that ramp, though. I am going to... Uh, so, Frosty's comment was, very strafe-heading map with a few annoying double jumps and step-ups, but ended up being pretty fun to grind. And seeing all the times being close is very exciting. It very much is exciting, seeing the times be super close. I'm going to have to go with what De uh, Kane sel sent me for this, which is that the... the like, how random that up-ramp was felt RNG, at least to Kane, uh, who will see his run later. He sent me an absolute essay, which has been really, really useful in watching these records. I, I won't read it on here, but it's, it is incredibly use, has been incredibly useful. Thank you, Kane. But the up ramp 
that you take sideways with the random height you get from the ramp and the spacing you have to absolutely perfect it can be really difficult to get the spacing right so frosty there i think that must have just been you either go slower to make the spacing perfect like we've seen quite a lot of other people do or you just push through it and he did still come out with despite eating it he came out with the same sort of speed we're seeing everybody else getting because he was able to jump further down the down ramp before so it didn't give him the good spacing but it did did give him extra speed so we might see that we might see that more we have a comment from whoa who is in chat love the map overall but i think moving back the end one to two seconds could have made more routes more viable potentially could have that end was super tight uh, and it was definitely the shortest route but yeah we will see what goes on whoa coming in eighth place with a 4-2. I'm going to open the other screen. Why is that not loaded? There we go. Uh, ping is not going to be a problem for start speeds. Because these are the server-sided ones. Woe had the first start. And the start speed was apparently insane. What's his start speed? I'm just going to restart that run. Because I missed the start speed and I can't find it in my stats. Where's the start speed? Uh, whoa. 547 start speed. Jesus. That is by far and away the fastest start speed. 548 according to the demo on here. Yeah, 547 according to the stats. 548 according to the demo. Absolutely mad. Comes around here. Takes a bit of a chunk, but it doesn't matter. And then sends it off into the distance. Up the ramp. A dig. Just grazes the purple step. Manages to be let through on this run. Flings into the finish. Really nice finish there. Keeping the strafe on at the end to keep that extra speed. A little bit of extra speed. CP5 probably where it went a little bit to pop, but gained the extra speed because CP6 is much faster. And we sort of see the same thing. We or we see the opposite thing we saw with Tilted, with the ones where Tilted was faster, Woe was slower. So that's where the trade off is going to come from because that is only 0.1 of a difference between the two runs a 0 0.5 0 0.05 sorry not even 0 0.1 here's Kane thank you very much for the SA Kane coming in 7th place Five thirty-nine. pretty good start speed Coming round to the right hand side. We're seeing a lot of different routes actually, which is it is quite interesting. Cool predicting that we'll see the same route with very minor variations of where people are double jumping off of and where exactly they're putting their feet and stuff like that. But yeah, you've you've like Knight said, you've got to go left to get more speed. Uh, or, sorry, left you've got to really strafe hard to get the speed. Right, you have to strafe lefts hard, and if you do strafe as hard, you can have more speed. It being so early, it can carry through. 10 seconds, you've got 20 seconds to use that extra speed. We've seen it can be up to about 50 or 60 units a second already between two similar uh, similar runs. So that is pretty good. Bumping up a decent chunk now. The biggest chunk we've seen in quite a while. 0 0.06 to Delta. With a 0.35. And the fact we're talking about 0.06 being a big jump. <laughs> Absolutely mad. But there's going to be some... Uh, there might be some bigger jumps than that. As we get further on. Some people running away with certain things. And battles forming all the way up the top. This tournament's definitely hotting up. Interesting start, so circle jump from Delta there. Talk a little bit about circle jumps in a couple of runs time. Nice spacing there to get up top, keeping good speed, and then that'll fling you around with barely any speed loss. Beautiful change from the W into the uh, AD that turning there. 
And then flying with great speed, keeps it, brings it a little bit wide. Goes on the wide path, but brings it back in. Isn't able to get much of a strafe out through the finish, but that looks like it's pretty consistent. The CP uh, intermediate 7 to intermediate finish is the same for Delta there. And that's the same for quite a lot of people. Not many people gaining much in the last bit, but I think that's there is stuff to be gained, but you just don't gain it because you always almost do the same finish. By the time you get a run that gets past the purple stair and you get to the finish, it's just a... It's just... You've got to do the same thing. Quite a lot of people safing it as well. Next up, we have Shinx. A big jump here with a point two two. That's a 0.13 difference over Delta. And here we run. Good start speed. Less good start speed. But a war sower, which we'll get onto with the next demo. Coming around on this right hand side. Taking good speed, keeping it round. I'm glad that there's been a 50-50 split by the looks. Beautiful keeping speed up there. Goes to the left, keeps a great amount of speed. That's a nice route to not get the double jump and not hit your head. Over the top here, just plus forwarding, just keeping it steady. It's all about the spacing through that stairs section. And into the finish, and that's a great run. So yeah, it's been interesting for seeing a left and right split be pretty much even. Uh... And here we go uh, with next up we have Freud. So Freud said something very interesting. He was busy the last days, didn't get to get the run he finished with, which is still insane for a 30.2. Uh, but Warsaw players and him have a bit of a problem with getting competitive start speed, which can be absolutely backed up if I flick over to the start speed. Uh, flick this on, flick that do a filter so Shinx had the slowest start speed followed by Rayona followed by Vert then Freud then Rainbow Shadow but Shinx and Freud fifth and fourth place the rest of the low starters have been down in the top 20 uh, in the lower end of the top 20 rather than the higher end whereas as you get up to the top it's everyone's in the top 10 as you go it's in there with a 12th place, but a very with the third highest start speed. Kane and Woe in seventh and eighth with the fastest start speeds. So yeah, the you know the fast start speeds are the fast players, but Freud, Chinks, the Warsowers do have the slower start speeds because they can't uh, can't pop it. But I did send a did send the guide on how to circle jump, which was apparently useful, so that's good. But yes, quite a lot of circle jump problems for the war sellers. It it has been noted that it's going on. So we will have a look at what that run looks like with a slightly worse start speed. And with Freud. This was an insane run when it was set as well. Because this was set pretty early. Like he said, he wasn't able to grind the last couple of days. A 519 start speed isn't too bad. But obviously that, you know, that depends on your runs. And he's clearly not got much better than it with a 0.03 lost time at the first checkpoint. So that's a pretty good, pretty good run. Coming through here, we saw last week how terrifying it is to be in front of or behind Freud as he's shooting the gun all over the place. And a really, really nice finish for the point two. And now we bump up into our top three. We have Knight, who did say all about uh, left and right routes that we should look out for, which has been very good. Thank you very much. He has a point one four, which is point six ahead. 
And we're going to take a look at this, and then I think we're going to run this in slow motion after, 50% slow motion. So we'll take a look at it run through in the full speed, and then we'll just run the whole thing through in slow motion, because we're going to need to, I think. Something about this is that you can guarantee everyone on this map didn't quite get the run they could have. You can see here when you see the intermediates guy and you see how many runs are getting through to about that purple step run. But here we go. That was not a bong. That's my water bottle has a straw in it because it's metal. Running on the left hand side, or the right hand side, sorry. I've probably got them mixed up a million times. Keeping great speed. Little bit of a hit there, about 40 speed there. Up through, someone's got the uh, Crylink. Probably Riffo. Beautiful round the corner, barely any speed loss. Keeps it strafing. He said he didn't get to strafe much into the finish, but that is one of the best straight line strafe finishes we've seen. So if he was able to do better than that, does it print? Oh, it doesn't print the... Um, didn't have print CP times for us. So, yeah, that looked pretty good with strafing into the finish there. We'll take a look at that one in 50% slow motion. Def no, not a bong hit. Just a better water bottle because I'm clumsy and break plastic ones. <laughs> Put cracks in them, so this one's just got big dents in it. I couldn't tell you, I can tell you the brand, but I couldn't tell you the uh, exact model. Pause it on finish for CP times, yeah. Running it through at slow motion anyway. I just want to see, because he said he didn't get a great finish, but it looked really good. Um, from what I saw just there compared to everybody else. So I'm interested in, in if he had a better run. You know, if he gained time, like pretty much everybody else we've seen from CP7 to CP finish, that they've not uh, not gained or lost any time. It's all the same. You'd have to go for a wolf break after this uh, after this run as well. So here's the s 50 speed loss there. Takes it round, running it wide. Not sure who had the Crylink there, honestly. Really beautiful strafing, really tight in there, wow. Gets the, doesn't get any double jumps, just straight on top of that. Adjust the spacing up to the green. Double jump off of the purple, brings him round for a nice double jump off of the side. Gaining gaining and losing the same speed, but yeah, so intermediate set, uh, 7 is a 0.08 and a 0.05, so yeah, he didn't strafe as much as he could finish. But that, like you say, Cos, did look like the best strafe we've had so far. So, yeah. Oh, it was Delta. I thought it might be from the name, but obviously weird for you to be on the US server. Here's the woofing though, how many have we got to do? One, two, three, four... I need the other thing because it's gone off the screen. One, two, three, four... Four! Woof! 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 Okay then. On to Source. With an insane jump here of point two. That's not point oh two, that's point two. And we're into what was claimed as impossible with a 29.94. Source and Goblin absolutely running away at the head of this, battling each other and nobody else can keep up. So let's have at it. Are we in full speed? We are in full speed. Good start. Taking it tight. Never mind. There we go. A bit better start speed there. Now look how close Source strafes to all these walls. But also watch the speed of the flicks. Because that's something that really separates the top strafers from the secondary top strafers. You know, the really good strafers from the insanely good strafers. 
I mean, the precision on this is just absolutely magical. Look, he's gaining speed around this corner the entire way. Even more strafe than Knight into that finish. Absolutely beautiful. We back into it for a half speed run of Source's run. The nano switch, yeah. That's not the one. Here we go. So the server best is a 30. There we go. W turn at the ramp. I a few people have done W turns at the ramp. I'm not sure which one's faster, but it's been back it's been a little bit back and forth. Mostly A D turns, but I think um, the W turners have mostly been going to the left. I think it's because you need to get very far to the right for that. So we'll see here. So Source lands right at the bottom. AD turning takes a bit of a big hit. The W turn is taking a lot less of a hit, but you have to get such so far round to be able to take this double jump cut across into the left hand line. And then we come through here, cutting so close off the top of there, get back on the strafes, gonna bounce up. Up and on top of there, which just looks like it's too far of a jump, but he manages to get the step up, brings it right round the finish, and then absolutely stunning strafe. This must have been what Knight was looking for, because, uh, like, that's insane. Knight's was already the best that we've seen, but that one is just really impressive. And so to top us off, we have Goblin. With an 8-7. Let's take a look at how this one goes. So we see where he's going already. We see the incredible speed he's taking. And he goes and bonks into the wall. So a 535 start. ADing that turn. Comes around with so much speed around this corner. Apparently there is something special about Goblin's run, but I'm not sure what it could be. Beautiful amount of speed kept there. Cuts it through the center. Off that ramp there to get the double jump to clear that purple step. Brings it round. Look at the speed of the finish and he double jumps and he nearly hits his head. I'm not sure if he had to crouch at the end there to get under the top. We did see people bonking their head at the end there. Uh, on the sort of finish box that you finish in because they double jumped off of a step just before but not the purple step what was the strafe percentage on that while we run through I'm going to put it into slow motion even here so what was the strafe percentage on that run Source had the highest strafe percentage with a 73.37 strafe percentage Mac actually had the fourth high. Uh, sorry, not Mac. Um, Goblin had the fourth highest with a 71.21. It's because he called himself G'day Mate in the game, for God's sake. I didn't expect me to not read that as Mac. Just, but he must have just gone. I mean, what was the the average speed on the man is eight higher than Goblin. Tilted had the highest average speed. So that was an incredibly wide route. But look at that. Absolutely stunning around the side there. Brings it in super tight. Keeps it going. No speed lost. And then instantly, as soon as he's facing straight again, back on the strafe. Just absolutely mad. Yeah, sure. Let's watch it with Sona. Watch it with Sona. Nightbird, panels, strafehood, sonar, one. This is going to be nutty uh, to hear. But here we go. So this is the sonar that beeps at you. Mute the tunes. Here we go. Tunes muted. So 
is the sound of perfection. I want to hear the sound at the end. Actually gets strafe. I've got no idea what the pitch difference is. That is genuinely the first time I've ever turned that uh, feature on. <laughs> but yeah, I think high and fast equals good. Like going bip, 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 like a Geiger counter going off and pointing at a bit of uh, bit of cheese. But yeah. Oh, the CP is auto sort. Des, you're an absolute magician. The CP data auto sorting from the uh, data when I've filtered the data. Yeah, absolutely magical. Let's take another look at that and see if we can slow down any specific sections. I want to see. When he comes up this ramp, I want to see how much, like, he loses with this. So he's in here. <coughs> Sorry. Loses 40. We've done the secrets reveal at the start of the stream. So he's coming around here, and we're getting, what's the exit with? 11.60 on that exit. Just remember that Source was faster, so Goblin had to come in more inside on a lot of these things. But look how close he's going to get to this corner just here. He comes round, not quite as close as Knight, but pretty damn close on there. Goes a little bit wide here, but that just brings him to come so close on the inside here. Keeps it, that's as close as we've seen. I don't think anyone's going to be able to get to the right to the inside there like we saw on some of the early runs when they're coming in with this speed and finishing at an absolutely mad amount of speed. Just stunning run. But yeah, Source and Goblin running away with it, really, uh, on that one as it goes. Let's pull up the stats at the end of the records. Here we go. We have your Continental Champions in yellow. Broccoli, Paul, Dez, Wood, Jizza. Your top 20 up here. And then your top two, the Continental Champions. Up at the top. Sauce and Goblin running away a little bit with it just here. Here's your times overall. Everyone who played. This is uh, the overall ranking. But we'll take a look at that in a second. Ignore this. That's the total. And this is round three points. And this is everybody who played in round three. All of those people. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. There we go. You can see how people have moved. And then let's take a look at the overall. Goblin sticking up in first. Source takes it up two places. Delta dropping down one. Knight moving up one. Freud up three, Shinx and Frosty stay in the same, Tilted's up one, Woe's up one, Vert's up four, which is absolutely incredible from that run. Gibbs stays in the same place, Snow's up, Silny's up, Ferrius is up, Rainbow's up, Asdu's up, Tofu's up, Quasar drops a couple of places, but still with a very decent run, very respectable run for this one. Uchi's up six places, I'm up six places into the top 20, which I didn't even know. And there's quite a lot of people floating around with close points. You know, nature could definitely take me. It's going to be a big jump for me to get up in any higher places. But here's a really close fight just here. These three, Uchi, Quasar, Tofu, within 20 points of each other. So this is going to be very, very tight. And outside, we've got some more quite close fights going on outside the top 20 and all the way down here. Dizzy possibly going to make a comeback in the next round. We'll see what goes on. And whether he can somehow miss a week and fight, uh, fight his way into the top 20. But is that an overcomable amount between Source and Goblin? Because if we go back to here, the points between them quite big, actually, between the two of them. So I'd be interested to see how Source can manage to do anything in the next two rounds and whether he can push it up. 
Still fending off Delta, who could come back. Knight quite close to there, but going to be stretching to reach Source, but could be fighting with Delta. So Delta's fighting off it on both fronts. Bit of a jump down to Freud. Shinks one point off of Freud. Uh, tied between Tilted and Woe, actually, just here. Did not notice that. There are decimal places in these ones, so interesting on that one. And yeah, there's there's good fights. There's some good fights going on throughout the top 20 and throughout this entire set. Like I said, we've got uh, 142 players that have finished all maps so far. I'm hoping we can beat last week last year's record, which I believe was 104 or 105 people finishing every map. So if you have so far finished every map, please come back and just play the next one, even if you think the map's shit, which you shouldn't do, because it's a phenomenal map. And we'll get into that map just now. Back over to the game. We'll hop in. Jump on the server. And take a look at what the, uh, what the next map looks like. So here we are with JH's map. You jump off at the start. You head over here. You can come down here, which we're not going to do because uh, I bonked the wall there. Why does it feel so much different when I'm not playing? There's a few different ways to come around here. Then you hit it up here, possibly onto the slick, possibly just straight across. As I say, many different ways to skin a goose on this map. Round and round this corner. And this is the end of part one of the map, effectively being two completely different working maps after you've come through this section. Either pinging it up off this bit or taking it up off of that centre barrel in the middle. Send it up there or drop down here. Through here. Off of the velocity pads and then through a warp zone. Gaining little bits of speed at a time. There's three warp zones effectively duplicated on both sides of course if you want to go through left or right. You need about 1900 speed when you come off of this velocity pad, sending it up, and you'll get over to here. Up, around, and through. Around the edges and into the bouncing. Then round and round the corner to the finish. Uh, the centre barrel... Yeah, I just jump over it or crash into it to be fair, but it is possible. It is possible. So, there we are. That was week three. Phenomenal time. Same time next week for the same thing. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm going to get the music back on. I'm going to get the bangers back on. Thank you very much for watching. It's been phenomenal. I will see you all next week. Keep grinding. Keep pushing. We will see what uh, can be put out. Like, subscribe if you've seen the whole thing. Come play with us if you are here and you've not somehow played. Follow the Twitch. All of those things. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. See ya.